Boom. Jaden, how are you today? Good, Paul. How are you? I'm very well. That's We've got good. another guest on our show. We do. It's exciting. Rose Kelly. Rose Kelly from Rose Kelly Real Estate. So Rose has basically started out in the very early days as a nurse, but then transitioned into real estate pretty much from there on in for what, 34, 30 something odd years? That's amazing. 36. 36, 36 years. Counting. No one's counting. <laughs> so look, you've covered everything from property management, coaching, training, the whole bit, haven't you? So I mm. mean, you, you know pretty much everything there is to know about this industry. <laughs> I, I've never been a commercial agent, but yeah, I have. Um, I've I've published. I've taught. I've been a sales agent, sales manager. I've been, you know, I've worked in very large businesses with sixty five staff in senior management, right down to my own business, micro business with one employee. So, yeah. And which do you prefer? The, the, the control of the little boutique agency or the humdrum and the politics of the larger ones? Oh, I think the answer's political. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, which do I prefer? I mean, I guess it depends where you're at in, in your stage in life. I mean, mm. what I'm doing at the moment I really love. Um, and, you know, it's nice to be – I mean, I'm 60 plus. Plus, yeah. How would you um, – <laughs> You don't I'm look it. Not you even. Honestly, not even. Day over four. Yeah, yeah, right, guys. Um, um, so, you know, you do get to a point in your life where, you know, a lot of people are saying, when are you retiring? And I think, well, you know what, I, I'm doing what I love. So if I can create a model mm. that works with my lifestyle now and I have the privilege of having the most awesome assistant who gets me, um, you know, because I do have opinions and I'm not easy. And um, we were just we were just laughing this morning. Sinead and I were on the phone and she's saying, calm down. And my husband was giggling in the background. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? And he said, I just love the way she handles you. <laughs> wow. That's, that's a good partnership that's to awesome. have, it's isn't gold. it? It's yeah, gold. like any business owner, you can be that train on those tracks and you're just going for it. And every now and again, you need someone to go, you know what? Let's just pull over this way a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's lovely. She, has, she has permission. She's got say. permission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, so that's lovely to know that you know you, you're passionate about what you do you're still mm. driven in the industry mm. and um you're getting to do all those little things on the side as well i, I um, we we read up that you're also uh, studying a diploma in, in counseling is that correct whilst That's you're doing right. real estate yes yeah, yeah, well, busy yeah. busy woman yeah well it's self-paced so um they say it can take up to two years but of course me being me i'm saying i can do it in 12 it's months a challenge but, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. but um yeah it's distance learning so you know it's it's um and there's written in a practical component. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying it and just developing my communication skills to a whole new level, I hope. So, so counselling, obviously, you know, it, it, it kind of, well, you could say it kind of goes hand in hand with real estate because you're dealing with a lot of people mm. and being able to understand the situation and, and their, you know, their purpose and process is, mm. would be important mm. to have, you know, some of that skill behind you to uh, mm. implement. Mm. I think I think a lot of people think that counsellors are therapists and advisors, mm. but in the truest sense, um, you know, client-centred approach to counselling is is actually really deep communication, yep. um, deep listening, deep reflection, um, and you know, I, I work on the basis that when people have a house to sell or want to buy or have a real estate need, it's usually a problem to be solved. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just how do we sit down and manoeuvre the best process for them, the best timeline, the best outcome. And, and it's very individual, very individual, mm. um, particularly residential housing. I mean, you know, residential property, generally when I go into a property – what I'm confronted with or what I meet is an autobiographical statement of someone's life. Yeah. And, and we don't take that lightly, you no. know. Um, and, and how do we help somebody unpack that and be ready to pass it on to the next person in a way that the next person's going to engage with it and love it and pay them a really good price. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Well, you know, so, I mean, if you think about behind the scenes, Jaden, you know, as a yeah. real estate agent, you are going into very unique situations. So mm. in a way, you know, real estate agents are traditionally counsellors. Like there's mm. lots of things happening, life changes, you know, and quite often, I don't know about you, Rose, but you might have some people almost crying on your shoulder, just opening up in ways you wouldn't think about. You have no idea what I have experienced in my real estate career. And my daughters tell me all the time, Mum, write the book, write the book. I have seen every Every life event um, happen and every pain and every joy and every – and I, I mean I love people mm. and I love working with people and I love sharing people's journeys and uh, – and, and, of course, the, the great thing about what I'm doing now is that I'm working with people that I've worked with for 10 and 15 years, you know. 
I recently did the tenth sale for a couple. That's wow. amazing. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. But but regularly meet you know, another one I did the third sale for a family. So each member of the family I've I've sold a property for. So you know, you, you become part of the whole journey of the family. It's it's quite a treasure. It's quite well, a treasure. testament, obviously, to the way that you run, you know, your business. Having people come back to you time and time again is just proof right there that, you know, you're a trusting and, and a very sort of uh, well, you know, well tuned to their needs. It's amazing that, you know, that not a lot of, you know, obviously in real estate, you, that repeat business isn't always a thing, is it? But it's, it's when you do it right, it's, it's yeah. definitely a, a gauge on how well you're doing in the like, industry. Yeah, I would like to think so. The other thing about my business from that perspective, often mm. when you sell somebody's house, they'll move three or four suburbs away and, you know, maybe lose touch as a, as a traditional agent, although you mightn't want to. You become very focused on your own area. Mm. The most common question I am asked in my business is, what area do you cover? Where, where are you located? And my answer to that is that I'm not a geographical agent. And, and you would have heard me say that. Yep, We've had yep. conversations yes, around we have. this. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm a relationship agent. So my ability is to work with people and, you know, at a deep level and to, you know, to, to switch on my real estate skills and nuance mm. that back into their situational problem or need transcends geographical boundaries. Now, I'm not so stupid to say I'm going to list your house at um, Coomera or mm. Belbowrie. I, I mean, it is it is reasonably yeah. limited to the north side of Brisbane. <laughs> but, but interestingly, people mm. and families do live in enclaves, mm. you know. So um, in, in the last six months, I have sold from Deception Bay to Hendra. Wow. You know, and That's a whole a range pocket. of... Yeah, it's not a pocket. Yeah, it's not a pocket. It's a, it's a, it's people. It's yeah. people, and mm. and ninety percent of people, um, you know, people we're selling to, selling for, I should say, are people who are connected in some way to somebody that we've worked with before, or people we meet on the journey. So we might meet somebody in the process of them buying or looking at a property, and they'll say. You know, we've got a house that we're thinking of selling. Would you like to come and have a look at it? Or you know, so it flows on. So, generally speaking, um, we're not the agent. You, you know, who will be who's the best agent in this area? We mm, we don't fit mm. that category, mm. um, which which has its challenges as well. Because again, the market doesn't always see it that way. They they went like, who sells the most property in Brighton? That's where your office is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're, who's we're the best agent? In, you uh, know. Yeah, this well, area. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because everything's online now, mm -hmm. you know, and all the information is 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 very centralised. Like, you know, it would have been years ago, you would have actually had to have known everything about that area and oh. its nuances and things because you didn't have access to all the information we have now. 100%. Mm. Um, I can tell you now that 25 years ago, I was selling real estate in Strathpine, in the largest office in Strathpine, and we would spend... Um, about half of our week setting up two or three good strong buyer appointments and we knew every piece of stock and we had land and if we couldn't sell them a house, we built them one. And so wow. we would make two sales a week and, you know, out of those three appointments because we would get the best appointments and we would spend all day Saturday and you'd spend half a day with people and, yeah. So it was, that's you know, amazing. it was just, it was incredible. It was an incredible um, environment but that's not what I do anymore. No. That's just, you know, I've, it's, I've just shifted. So, you know, when you say to me, what do you like best? I like what I'm doing now because I have crafted a business out of my experience, out of my relationships, out of my, I suppose, my skill set and my desire to live an independent, you know, bit of a freelance life. So what made you choose um, to start up your own thing? Because there's, there's people out there who buy, um, who go into Rain and Horn or LJ or those big brand names, what made you do Rose Kelly Real Estate? <laughs> I might have hinted to that before. I am fairly independent in my thinking. And I'm gonna, like if I, if I see an idea, I want to run with it or I want to explore it. So I do really enjoy learning. I really do enjoy stretching into new directions. Um, uh, for an old dude, I'm not bad on technology. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm the first to scream if something, you know, oh, I don't, this doesn't have work. But, but, you know, so I think we, it's, it's about 
having the ability to change and morph and grow and be independent, mm. to make decisions about doing it the way I want to do it yeah. and the way I believe is right for clients. Well, the industry is, you know, becoming very, very agile, isn't it? Like, I mean, you're one of very few what I would class as digital agents out there. And, mm. the, you know, the length of experience you've had in the industry to adopt all of this new technology mm. and try and make it work for your business. I mean, you would be streaks ahead of some of the bigger brands that are just still trying to put it together because you can just flick a switch and go, yep, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, whilst, you know. And, and, and that's exactly right. I yeah. get frustrated in a larger organisation because if I see something and I think, why can't we do that? And let's do it next week. Mm. So, you know, Sinead does temper that a lot. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, the other thing is it's not about what's right for our business. What we, what drives us is what makes it easy for our clients. Right. What makes it easy for buyers to work with us. You know, what makes it easy for somebody to be able to put in an offer. What makes mm. it easy for our owners to know everything that's happening on their property at any given time. So... There's technology around that's really good at that stuff, mm. and um, that's what we're using. So, I mean, so I mean, there's a lot out there. Okay, so one of the things I've noticed with with your brand is that you're a very nurturing brand. You know, it's not just yep, met that person, we're done. You mm. take them down, and you've got lots of information that you hand out to buyers and vendors along the way mm. to help them with that whole process. Like, mm. it's not it's not simple anymore, is it? Mm. You have a massive mm. process, mm. massive process, and. Um, and still developing that, you mm. know, we are still writing, still developing, still working on, you know, we, we just this year have taken the time to develop a whole range of digital tools around buyer information kits, seller information kits, checklists for this point, checklists mm. for that point, that we can give people, you know, mm. how do you get the your property to present the best, how do you, you know, there's a whole range of things that we provide and we're, and we're constantly developing that that material and content and then digitizing it so it's really easy to get out to people quickly mm. and and different material needs to be presented in different channels and different ways yeah, it's not cookie so cutter is it it's not cookie cutter no. and and you know I need to produce material that you know we know 65 percent of our buyers and sellers prefer to use a mobile phone to a PC, you know, mm. it, was, it was about 30% on a PC and maybe 10% on a, on an iPad. So, mm. and though they seem to be fairly consistent. Mm. So if 60% of people are using a phone and somebody sends me something on a phone that I can't see properly or can't use, ouch. Yeah, yeah. you've got to take those roadblocks away. Buyers are very, very time poor, aren't they? They mm. need to know the information and, and be able to access it as easily as possible. Mm. So on that as well, I mean, you, you did touch a little bit there on, um, you know, obviously presenting homes and getting them ready. Um, you'll be one of very few agents that um, we've noticed over the years that put in that amount of effort. Mm. Like it's because you, you don't do large volumes of sales. It's no, no. kind of not your thing. It's more no. very, very individualised mm. and you're going to put everything on the line yep. to make that work. Yeah. So, I mean, you said that we're nurturing. So we we are like we take the process to the max. Mm. Um, we sell a – we list a small volume, but we sell 100% of what we list and we do it with five-star ratings. So to do that, we have to put attention to every cushion, every – Every everything, and and it's a bit of a fine line because we don't want to overwhelm people as well. Some mm. people will say, "Listen, you know, Rose, that's all great, but this is my house. This is the best I can do." So I just say, "Let me do a little bit better." Yep. So our our um, go to market experience is quite an experience that we micromanage ourselves. Sinead and I would spend a whole day at the property on production day. So it's not just coming, somebody's taking photos or it's a whole day and mm. we would be there at like 8.39 in the morning and probably leave about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. Wow, that's massive. And that's, um, that means, yeah, we, in fact, my husband will watch this at some point and he'll go, <laughs> yeah. We have this wonderful big three-bay shed that was designed, it was meant to be the man cave. <laughs> half of yeah. it, He's lost half it. Half of it is, yeah. is the styling products yeah. and um, the cushions. I mean, this, you know, yeah. I, I met a lady recently, you love this, I met a lady recently, she said, I've been living on a boat for the last 20 years. She said, and, and now we're back and, and we've docked and we want to buy a unit. And I was showing her around some units and it was a couple set up as display units and she said, I need to ask you something. There's a phenomena that's appeared since we moved onto our boat and, and I've noticed it. 
it's pillows. <laughs> and I went, yeah. She said, tell me, all these pillows that people put on beds, do they take them all off at night and put them back or, or back on it every morning? And I went, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Ask my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I was you've thinking, got a collection of pillows if the oh, shed's yeah. almost half full. Yeah, yeah. I would, so, I would love so to we've see got the this, pillow collection. So people say to me, oh, we haven't got a nice bed here. Don't worry, we'll shush it up with pillows. Pillows, <laughs> bring in the pillows. <laughs> we bring the pillows. <laughs> yeah, <come> so <laughs> we backed the car and honestly, <laughs> we had to go and get a big four-wheel drive that could put the seats down to fit the pillows in. Oh, oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, of course. I have I'm to pillows. ask, Rose, why, why spend so much time on that process? Like, because I've I've talked with, with agents who, um, who who don't spend that kind of time. It's always about it needs to, to be on th- needs to be listed as soon as it's almost signed. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, why there's spend a movement that time? afoot. There's a movement afoot. Tell us about <laughs> it. Would love to hear it. Oh boy. Um. So so there's a there's a thing that agents are calling the off market experience, which which really does my head in, and I'm like, no. it's either on the market or it's off the market. If you're selling is selling. And, and, and if it's if I get a signed appointment, the property is on the market. But then, you know, I'm, I'm say, hearing people say to me, we can get it out to buyers within 30 seconds of it being, you know, because we, we – now, you know, I'll just I'll just share with you. I sat down um, – I'm sorry, I've jumped the gun, but I'm going to come back and answer that. Yep. I sat down with some people to list their house earlier this week, and they are friends of mine. They're dear friends of mine. So I try to shatter the myth that you shouldn't do business with friends and family because that's pretty much – if they're not friends mm-hmm. when they start, they're friends when we finish. Um, so – it, she said to me, couldn't we just spend the money on the photos and then you put it out to your buyer list? And I said, yeah, we could do that. But here's the thing. You're coming to my place for Christmas lunch this year. I'm not going to feel comfortable having champagne with you unless I know that when we walk away from this transaction, we have maxed it, mm. not just done it. Yeah, Because you're more important to me than that. She went, okay, that's cool. Let's do it. Yep. So there's that element, you yep. know. We we, um, uh, you know, I'm I'm obsessive about maxing it, you know. So, uh, and I don't mean to overwhelm people with that idea mm. because it's just something that I I feel very passionate. I I have a deep deep sense of the role of an agent, a deep understanding of the role of an agent, and it is the seller's advocate. So I should be doing things for the seller that they can't don't want to or don't, you know, don't have the knowledge, skill or inclination or motivation to do for themselves. So that means jushing it up with pillows or moving the furniture around. Um, and, and you know, the, you, you do our videos. So mm. you came to a property this week and the living area looked so big and spacious. It was gorgeous. When I went to that property at 8.30 in the morning, the, the owners had arranged the furniture how, how they thought. And I said to them, now, what I want to say to you is it's probably better that you disappear or don't take any notice of us for the next few hours. <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> Just <look> away. <laughs> and she said, yeah, that's okay. I said, because I'm going to play here. Mm. And and we, I didn't know what I was going to do till we really got there and went, okay, mm. there's actually a piece of furniture that we don't need. She said, well, we don't need it either. In fact, it's going to the tip. And I said, let's tip it now. And there's a piece of footage that Sinead <laughs> took and put yeah. on Instagram of us <laughs> tipping it over the balcony. But, you know, we, we were able to completely change that around. And yeah. and, and the one that you're coming to next week, um, I, I've, I've got an agreement already in place of what we're going to move out of that family room to really showcase this room and showcase this house. So yeah. um, now the, on the other side of that coin, the thing that we constantly hear from buyers is thank you. I'm like, mm. what do you mean? When we come to your properties, they're true. So I don't think we're overstating anything. I don't think we're overrating what's there. It's about, you know, how to take a piece of real estate and really optimise it without misleading. That's right, 100%. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, again, it's all about emotion, isn't it? I mean, people, um, you know, buyers are, are very emotional beasts, aren't they? So when they when it resonates with them and they want to see it, they'll turn up and go, oh, this is for me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that preparation pays dividends, doesn't yeah. it? 100%. You know, what I love about what you do with your styling or your preparation is it's not like you take it all out and then just bring in all new stuff. You leave little nuances of the the, the current owners, like that house which we which we shot on on um, 
on my Monday, you left, uh, was it the like sideboard. a sideboard? And it was yeah. like, and it was old and it matched the house, yeah. but it, it, but it still worked. And it, like, and it really brought this warm emotional feel. So yeah. it's not like it's, it's like it's out, like out with the old and in with, yeah. with the. So the sideboard yeah, stayed, something else went over the balcony. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it was, um, it was, uh, it, it was a beautiful house with a lot of memories and, mm. and we wanted to pay some homage to that, mm. if you like. And, um, but also I, you know, I think people will go, yeah, great. I hear about staging. I know about styling, but it costs money and I don't have a budget for that. And I say, well, let's see what we can do with what you've got. Mm. So that particular house didn't have a bed beyond the main bedroom, but they had a mattress. So, Oh, this is brilliant. So they actually, I said, do you know what? I'm going to say, ordinarily I'd just say, okay, we'll work with it. We'll get it virtually styled or we'll do something, you know, we'll put some pictures in there of a bed. I said, but I really love a bed in there. I really love I got a picture for that bedroom. Mm. And so they made a bed out of cardboard boxes and put the mattress over it. <laughs> That's She'd seen brilliant. this on one on a flip up program in from the States and said, I, I've seen how they do this. And so, you know, that bedroom is probably one of the most stylish it's just gorgeous how it's turned out. But if people knew it was just a mattress sitting on cardboard boxes, that'd be horrifying. Yeah. Like, don't, don't sit on the corner. <laughs> yeah, don't sit it on was, <laughs> for as soon as I knew how it was made, I was like, yeah. this is amazing. But it was one of the, in terms of how it's shot, it was like, I'll throw up a shot here. Mm. It just worked. And, it's, and it spoke to that room perfectly. Yeah. So, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. very, that's, uh, yeah. It's that's just, initiative right there, isn't it? That's yeah, fantastic. It's amazing. So we like to work with people's uh, own furniture. I yeah. mean, you know, we're, we're going to a property next week, which is very traditional, and they've got a lot of traditional furniture. Mm. But it's this, it works with the style of house. It's beautifully presented. Mm. Um, they've done a few things. And, and I say to people, you know, I mean, if they ask me the question, what should I do? Um, you know, this is a retired couple... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying to them, you really should do something with this pergola floor. Mm. You know, mm. you probably really should have a coat of paint. Now, you don't have to do that, but if you ask me what's the best thing to do, now, it's not expensive, but it's a pain. Mm. And of course, they've done it. Their daughter came and did it, two coats. Man, it's just pops. It's going to look fantastic in the photos compared to how it was. Mm. So how many times have you gone through that process where they've gone, oh, here we go, but then have they felt really proud about their accomplishments oh, at yeah. the end and go, oh, wow, that was all worth it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And and I think that's why we get the five-star five reviews. You know, like we got one yesterday from a seller. It was, a, you know, it was a very basic house. And I think if we'd left it, it was a small basic house. Mm. If we'd left it alone with nothing, um, that it, it would have lost something yeah. in translation. And so, you know, creating spaces with furniture and and speaking to, you know, speaking to the size of the house, putting a small dining table in there, but still showing buyers that you can do that. If that space was left empty. I'd be saying, where can I put a table? But because we put a table there, and it's only a small table, mm. people can see what can be done. That's right. Mm. Yeah, that you visual know. thing again. Yeah, so just course. to touch on what Jaden was saying before, like, so you've gone through this massive process of getting the home ready, and and the owners are gone. Yep, we've done it. They must feel very invested at that point in that process. Yeah. Now, do you, in your opinion, do you see um, any big dividends then of it being on market for a shorter period of time with that preparation, as opposed to just rushing and just wham bam out you go? Are we prolonging the process mm. by doing preparation? Yep. Well, this is the interesting thing. So um, we like to start talking to people very early. Like I'm talking to people sometimes six and 12 months mm. before they go to the market. That's not always possible. But, you know, I'm working with a couple at the moment. I've been working with them for uh, six weeks. Mm. They're nearly ready. Mm. And I've been back three times. And, you know, they keep calling me saying, okay, we're at the next level. What are we? You know, so we don't slow the process down if we don't need to. We say to them, what's your ideal time frame? And we work with that. Okay. And then when I say to them, look, once you give me the, the go button and, and we say we're, we're going to the market and we get the appointment, we need about a week. So we work mm. pretty rapidly in that week. Mm. So does that week slow them down? No, it speeds it up because, you know, most of our stock is selling mm. Um I mean, right now it's selling very quickly because mm. the market's on fire. But even prior to that, my average days on market, I mean, even seven years ago, was under 30. 
Yeah. Because this this isn't stuff that I've just done now. I mean, I, I've been operating this way when I had my last office. You know, we we've we really focus very much on keeping our days on market short, our success rate high. And the owner, most particularly the owner with all the decision-making power. Mm. So it's not just about getting a sale. It's about maxing the price and having the options, the information, the feedback so that the, when the owner makes the decision to put their moniker on the contract, mm. they're doing it with confidence that this is the best. Oh, the and they can see pay. that you've been dedicated right from the very start. Mm. Is you know, So putting that extra time and effort in and making sure that you know all the dots of all the you know eyes are dotted t's are crossed you know yeah. you've mm. done everything in your power to make sure yeah you get to mm. contract mm. it's mm. Mm. Yeah. well i i come from a belief that the property is not worth what the owner thinks it's worth mm. but equally it's not worth what i think it's worth um it's not worth it's worth what the market's prepared to pay and that's mm. not one buyer that's a range of buyers. So, you know, I sat down with people the other day and, and, and we've got data now that we, we can actually go on to RP data and it can tell us what it thinks mm. algorithmically or mathematically what this property is going to sell for. So the interesting thing, this particular property, it said it's going to sell from 387 mm. to 475. Well, an owner doesn't want to hear that. So least of all, she goes, oh my God, we're not selling it for 387. But I said to her, the chances of you selling it for 387 are exactly the same as the chances of you selling it for 475. Probably not going to happen. But let's look at where the algorithm says it's most likely to sell. Mm. And so, you know, we narrowed that down and said, with high confidence, it's going to sell in this range. Mm. And I went, yeah, yeah, okay, we're comfortable with that. So then we look at, you know, again, there's a process that we go to, and I won't go into it here, but about how we communicate the seller's expectations to the market because again you know there's a, i think in, in this market there's a fair competition from buyers and we don't want to undersell something mm. so it's really important that we have a strategy around that and i mean you know there's there's a quite a common strategy emerging in the market where we won't put a price on it so you know that is the surest way to annoy buyers no price on a property and I'm sure for all the buyers listening today, they <laughs> would say that is the one thing that annoys them the most. So I say to sellers, so, you know, I, I can put your property on the market with no price and there are plenty of agents who will come in and say to you that's the best way to go. But we've done all this work. We've strategized mm -hmm. about marketing. We've got the cushions. We've got the, mm -hmm. the dooners. We've got the thing. We've got the videographer. We've got the music. We've got the whole thing and, and, and it's beautiful. Do we want a buyer to walk in the door going, here we go again, another bloody agent who won't put the price on it? Not at all. We mm. want not an ounce of negativity. Not one ounce. Because that's going to start diluting what we've put all the effort into. So we have to give the buyers an indication. And it can be just an indication, but we have to give them something. And that's my rationale. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, yeah, there's definitely two schools of thought on, on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm buying. And at the moment in my area, I think probably five out of six or seven homes have no price. So where, where do you start as a buyer? How do you know? I mean, you've got to go on and do all the research yourself, don't you? And as you know, there's not very many platforms out there that can give you an accurate idea. You've got the mm. banks that are offering appraisals mm. and pricing. Mm. But, mm -hmm. you know, that take that with a pinch of salt. That doesn't well, necessarily always work. Well, the banks... <laughs> So people say to me, oh, bank valuation was this. And I'm like, hang on a second. The bank is in the business of selling money. So they either have lots to sell, mm. right, or they don't have much to sell. And they will vary their agenda, their motive, their valuation based on that. They are a party in the transaction and they're selling money, you're buying it. So don't think the bank's on your side. Mm. Mm. That's a very good point. And, and in fact, they'll be very loose with their valuation once their debt to, to valuation ratio. We, if there's more than 20% equity in the deal, they don't really care. They'll do a desktop valuation anyway. So the bank is the last person that we would take any credence from. Sorry, banks, but that's just the reality. That's, that's how it is. That's Absolutely. how it is. They're in the business of selling money. Great, great at doing mm. that. And right now they're selling it really cheaply, which is put, you know, putting added pressure on the market. But, you know, for the first time in my real estate, my, my life, my never seen anything like what's happening at the moment that's and, and that's 30 odd years yeah. <laughs> this is the first time for you it's amazing all right this well, goes to show what uh, what the market's doing we might 
take a quick break um, and we'll be back and we'll talk about um, what is happening at the moment in the the current market and um, and more things with Rose. Absolutely. Back soon. Uh, welcome back, everyone, uh, for our short break. We're uh, uh, continuing here with uh, Rose Kelly from Rose Kelly Real Estate. So we're talking a little bit about what was going on in the market. Um, so what, um, what what things are you sort of seeing at the moment? What? There's certainly quite an imbalance between uh, the volume of stock available and the number of buyers. So that sort of initially kicked off um, in the height of the COVID uh, experience because, you know, back March, April, listings just dropped off the cliff. I mean, people stopped listing their property and understandably, A, because initially you couldn't get people through and then it was like, oh, we think the market's going to crash and, mm. well, you know, we're going to have this major recession, so why would we sell our house now? And B, where can we go if we can't leave Queensland and we can't travel or spend our money in other ways? So... So that was a bit understandable, but gradually that supply has picked up, perhaps not to pre-COVID levels, but but there's certainly been an increase in supply. But what has changed is the volume of buyers in the market and always driven by external factors and and interest rates. So it's, um, you you know, we've seen it get stronger and stronger and stronger. So, you know, with banks announcing a three-year fixed rate at one9 Nine percent. That's just historic, isn't it? It's amazing. It's, it's well, it, it's quite unbelievable. Mm. I'm meeting people now in their fifties, um, you know, late fifties, saying I am a first home buyer. Wow, that is so cool. Wow, it's like you know because I'm I'm always <laughs> always going for the backstory. It's like, so have you been looking for a while? Oh, we've been waiting for ten years for this moment. That's another <laughs> comment. Um, we, you know, finally. And I sat down and I and I was talking to some some young kids the other day, saying, you know, you, you really should be getting on this bandwagon because, you know, when you think about a five hundred thousand dollar or four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and you take five hundred, nice round figure. I mean, the interest on that is going to be around two hundred dollars a month. It's nothing. Ma- no, hang on, two hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Two hundred dollars a week. So if I'm paying five hundred in rent, I can take that three hundred and pay it off the principal, mm-hmm. in addition to anything else that I can find to pay off my principal. So you know, that's that's incredible, and and that's just you know, people will say, oh, interest is dead money. Rents, well, de- the Oh, rent is yeah. When you weigh up the rent versus interest, mm-hmm. if the if the rent is two and a half times the interest, it's a no brainer, isn't it? Absolutely no brainer. Yeah. There you go, Jane. There's another one for you. Yes, yeah, that's so two that. in a row. You better <laughs> hop to it. I know, right? I still have to keep <laughs> saving. That. My husband and my hi are um, uh, planning to, to buy a house, but 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 we're just not sure, you know, about you know. Do you buy a house because you know the, the, the amount of coin that is mm. needed to to actually get that loan, and then all all like do you, do you, do you do stocks? Or you do you do this? You do that? You know. Jayden, I mean? So it's just, Jayden, yeah. Here we go. You're being schooled, mate. Okay. <laughs> just slow down. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to ask you: Where do you think property prices are going to be when you finish that decision making? Probably not where they are now. <laughs> so, you know, if we are getting 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 offers on a property, that's not inquiry, that's not inspections, that's offers. Right. Okay. And we're meeting people who are saying, I'm going to jump on this because, and I'm probably going to pay a bit more than what I should because I've missed out on the last six that I've gone for. Um, you know, I don't know if you can say fast enough to get ahead of that ball. Yeah. It's a it's a ball that's running down a hill, and you're gonna you're say you know when it gets to the bottom we're gonna be in front of it. Well, you better be able to run real fast. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what point. I'm saying? Yeah, that's so a really good point. I'm I'm not gonna tell you when to buy, you know, because I have the same conversation with my children and you know yeah. and their friends and and not everybody's in a position. But you know the government is offering and has really opened up the number of packages available now on that first homeowner um, supplement scheme where they are, mm. you know, 5% deposit and then they're giving the equity up to 20, the, the equity guarantee up to 20%, which which avoids loan mortgage insurance and, um, and it gives some sort of um, guarantee. But, you know, look, 
everybody's got a different story and it is challenging for people when, you know, maybe their income is maybe a bit questionable or their job security, those sorts of things. But I would say um, one of the things that, you know, probably there's a few things when it comes to buying is just make sure that you don't do things that are going to make you non-competitive or put you out of the picture. So some people say, well, we'll go and buy a new car first, so that's done. And then when we move into the house, we've got the new car. But all of a sudden they've got car payments and that wrecks their credit ability or their loan ability, you know, and or we'll do this or we'll change jobs or we'll, you know, what banks want to see is boring old savings history, mm-hmm a lump of money in the bank and no other debt. That's it. So you That's know, then you're in, then you're in. Yeah. And get yeah, in. That's some great advice for first home buyers or people like myself who are who want to buy a house but don't really know the, the mm. process and what to do right. Oh, yeah. Jaden, we've got a great little um, – I'll get Sinead to send it to you when we're finished. Yeah. Um, the 12 essential steps for buying your first home. Oh, perfect. I'll send it to you. It's our little checklist, a yeah. digital tool we, we give people. Can, can you brush over that on the oh. podcast okay. briefly? Oh, now I have to remember it. But it's things like just make sure that your credit history is good. Yep. Um, so, you know, you could go and do a credit check on yourself, each other, you know. It's a bit like when you you meet somebody. Sometimes they say, "Go and have a blood test." Well, can I have a credit check. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> my way. Um, okay, tested, anyway, we Jayden. won't go there. We won't go there. But um, you know, be careful who you sleep with. I say to people because uh, we usually meet them on the other side when they're getting divorced, and it's really painful and really expensive. So be careful who you sleep with. Um, but <laughs> let's just um, <laughs> let's just uh, moving right along. We. We um, just make sure that your credit check is the credit history is right, and that might be through no fault of your own. We we met a couple last year, painful story, but they fell in love with this house and wanted to buy it, and they were in a new relationship, and he had good income, she had some deposit because she had another house, so they put it together and went great. We're going to buy the family home. Everything was good. Did the finance application. It was all good to go, and the broker did the credit check, and he said, you know, mate, you've got a credit history, and he goes, what do you mean? And so she starts looking at him like, oh, God. What you have know. you done? <laughs> you know, you've done something in your past you didn't tell me about. It was identity fraud. Oh, my god! So somebody had used his identity and taken a mobile phone account and breached, you know, like had, had um, dishonoured that uh, agreement and had a credit history. And it's so difficult to clear a credit history now, mm. even oh for a God. small amount of money. And it was like a few thousand or whatever it was. It was nothing much. So he had to go through this whole process of A, proving it wasn't him, getting police involved, getting... But the company who now manage credit referencing in Australia has been bought out by a multinational. So they were not just dealing with this, but they're dealing with an international company and then it's like, what are their laws? And all I just want to do is buy a little house in Brackenridge, oh, <laughs> five hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, Paul couple and little family. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. To jump so, so they. So that was one step. You know, that's yeah. one thing. Um, and just make sure that your your bank statements are clean and clear, and they match what you earn. And um, you know, my daughter should probably kill me for saying this, but she had an application in for a. Um, it was a, a sort of like a scholarship thing for for uni, and she was granted this scholarship but it was based on you know needs but you know they were they did um they looked at she had to submit three months of her bank statement she goes oh my god mum they're going to see Dan Murphy's Dan Murphy's Dan Murphy's <laughs> I said yeah but well, that's pretty probably pretty stock standard for students so that's going to be okay <laughs> yeah you know, I don't so know that's like, too different yeah. so so she she won this scholarship you know based on um you know I'm a poor student <laughs> but then she said to me because she's always thinking. She goes, well, you know, Mum, if I was actually going for a home loan, now I'm not actually suggesting this, and you may not choose to publish this, but I probably run dual accounts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yes, I'm all perfect. Yeah, just hide that one over there. <laughs> so, but put but all the, the Ubers the story, and Netflixes on that one. And <laughs> the moral of the story is, you probably can't. I said to her, right. you, you know, the banks do what's called a data sweep, um, and they, you know, so just be mindful mm. of your budgeting and how you spend money and and show them you know because it, it's it's actually going to be your your bank accounts are going to be swept and put through a process 
so that, you know, you, you do need to prep. You do need to prep for mm. six to 12 months and understand they're going to go through three months bank statements. And mm. if you say to them, I don't have a credit card and there's, um, you know, a, a payment to, to you know, GE or whatever, I don't know, some visa card somewhere yeah. uh, every month, they're going to say, hang on a second, you know. So, so your preparation, your savings history, stability of your employment, make sure you're out of probation, all those things. Eliminate all of your small repayments because they impact dramatically on your, uh, your ability. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the finance side. And then it's about, you know, what do we want in the house? So <laughs> I think you should start with what do you need in a house? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the base. And then what do we want? And then what's our dream? Okay. You're probably not going to get all of it. Okay. And you probably don't know what you're prepared to compromise on until you start looking. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, then it start, Then it begs the question, do we start looking before we're really ready? Because you are likely to fall in love with something before you're ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my sense would be to just, you know, decide the levels of looking. So you might start looking online and you might do your research online and then as you're getting closer to getting ready, then you start actually walking through property because properties will grab you and talk to you and they'll say, pick me, pick me, pick me and you'll go, oh my gosh, this is our dream home but we're not quite ready and then there's this whole emotion. You don't want it to be stressful. No. Okay, so get really well prepared. And if you want to get really well prepared, get a pre-approval in place. So, you know, the people who who come to us who are knowledgeable about the market, they know what they want, what they need, what they can afford. They've got the pre-approval. They've narrowed it down to suburbs. They've gone out. They've done their homework online, been to open houses. They, 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 you know, then you're making yourself really competitive mm. And, mm. and in a position to make an offer yeah. when the right thing comes along. Of yeah. course. Thank wow. you, Rose. Look, that's, that's Rose that's, Kelly right there. That's absolute gold. That's so that, that came out of one small checklist of many things that she's got to offer. Yeah. How do you feel, Jaden? <laughs> I feel a light and I'm so excited <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm going to go home now and say, now, look, babe, we have to watch this part of the podcast. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Down here. Yeah. I'll well, send, that, that just send you the checklist. Yes. Yeah, send yes. you the checklist. Thank you, Rose. That's so awesome. that, um, you know, I mean, we've been talking now for a few minutes, or, well, 20, 30 minutes now, right? So that, you know, we, we're talking about your, your motto, mm-hmm. real estate with heart. Mm-hmm. And that's a prime example there of what Rose does in her day-to-day life, just helping individual people through an individual situation. Yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's what we do. That's what we do. And, you know, you bring me a a real estate problem. And people ring me all the time and say, oh, I've got a friend. They don't know whether they should renovate or sell. And I'll go around and say, you know what? If I was here, I'd stay here. I'd renovate. This is what I do. I'd knock that wall down. I was at this house yesterday showing it and I'm like, they said, it's a bit of a rabbit warren. I said, yeah, but let me show you. I reckon this is what you could do. I've already got it planned. It is a rabbit <laughs> warren because you have to walk around almost through the bathroom to get to the laundry in the bedroom because it's been built in underneath. But if you took this section of the wall out and closed the bathroom off there and all of a sudden, because the, the parents want to buy the house, but mm. they said the toughest critic will be the son. But he's going to live downstairs. So we walked outside and they said to the son, so what do you think? And he went, thumbs up. And they went, oh, my God. <laughs> and they've raised thing. home. They've raised home before he changed his mind and put he in an offer. Yeah. Problem solved. Wow. Tick. <laughs> That's so, so cool. Yeah, yeah, it is really cool. So, we, But a lot of that comes from experience. I mean, yeah. I can look at a floor plan and say, you know, I mean, even the house that we've just done ourselves, my husband said, oh, my God. It's the first house we've done together. And he said, when we walked in, I thought, what is she thinking? Mm. But all he saw was the shed. So he was happy to go along with it. And then he went, I never in my wildest dreams could have imagined what you saw in that property. There you go. So, yeah. You've been there so many times. There's probably no situation that you probably have not experienced. Can't think so. No. But, you know, constantly learn. Everybody's different. It's the combinations that come together, you know, that, that I mean, we're, there's still challenges. There's still, should we do a building and pest on this before we sell? Should we take this property to auction? Should we mm. list this with this price? Or, you know, like it, it, you're taking everything into account. You are really gathering all the information. And I suppose that's where the counselling skills come in because with deep communication skills, I want people to trust me, tell me the whole story because mm. when I know the whole story, I can give them the best solution. So real estate with heart. 
Trust. Okay, it's share. your it's mm. your why. Mm. It's the reason why you do what you do. Mm-hmm. Just touch on that just a little bit. Summarize what I mean. I well, shouldn't say summarize because I don't think you probably could summarize it. But give us a give us a brief rundown on what that philosophy is. Um, well, you know, it, we do it with passion. We do it with passion. We do it with care. We do it with compassion. We do it with empathy. Um, and, and you know, they're all nice glossy words. But what do we do? We really build on trust. We really build confidence, transparency. We try to engage with people at a deep level, um, you know, bec- and it is a short relationship and you'd like to say we're all going to stay friends and go out for dinner every Saturday night for the next six months. I mean, that's not life. That that's, You know, it is, it is a commercial transaction but it is one where we want to bring something very special to that transaction and we do and, uh, you know, that's certainly the feedback that we get and the feeling that we get. And, um, and you know, I know both Sinead and I are very strong on this. We talk about it a lot. Um, it's a very core part of our marketing and our messaging to people. And, um, you know, and that doesn't suit everybody, mm. you know. Um, there are people who say, you know, okay, well, we don't really want the heart. We just want to get in, get out and do the deal and that's okay. That's a, it, it, it's, we don't want all the business either. <laughs> no, but I mean, you've had, what, 10 sales of the same couple and you've had, what, repeat business now three times over. So, yeah. you know, you're banking some really good feelings there, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's what it's about. It, and we don't do it, you know, you know, it's not – we're not flippant about it. You know, we mm. are really – it is our core message that we really do care and we really deeply understand the role of an agent at, at a legal, ethical, moral and compassionate level. And we are the client's advocate and we take it seriously. Wow. Absolute gold. Well, thank you so much, Rose. I think we're going to end it there is, because yeah. that was just, that was the pinnacle, I think, of the whole <laughs> you, podcast. You yeah. need to end it because I can just talk all day and yeah. I've got yeah. appointments. <laughs> we'll put this bit at the beginning because yeah. it was absolute gold. Thank you so much for coming down, oh, it's Rose. It's been excellent. You know, I hope too. you enjoyed it. I did. Yeah. I did. And I um, thank you for the opportunity to, okay. to be on, on your Real Estate Raw. Yes, and I don't think it'll be the last, last one. No, either. I think yeah, this was exciting. <laughs> yes, I think yep. expect would another invitation, or Sine is going to be going. All right, she's booking in another one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, thank you okay. very much for listening, and um, yeah, Thanks, stay guys. tuned. Cheers. Good Bye. on you. Have a great day.